Welcome all. Today we will discuss the extraction of aluminium. This is a part of metallurgy and to begin with the first thing that we should know is about which ore has to be used for the extraction of aluminium. So the main ore of aluminium is bauxite and the formula for bauxite is Al2O3 dot 2H2O. Uh, in the last lecture we had discussed that for the extraction of any metal the first thing that we require is the ore of that metal. So please remember the main ore is bauxite. Then we learned that once the ore is obtained it needs to undergo the process of concentration. In concentration, the bauxite has to be treated in such a way that all the impurities, impurities which are present in this bauxite may be removed. Remember that in bauxite, the actual aluminium oxide is present around 30 to 60 percent only. Rest all are impurities. Impurities like we have got ferric oxide in this, then uh, we have got silica. What is silica? Silica is sand. Then apart from silica, the titanium oxide is also present. Then certain other clay etc. So all this has to be removed. Therefore, the bauxite has to undergo concentration process. Now these impurities also include this water of crystallization and the process that we will follow to concentrate this ore is called is called Bayer's process. Now the name is very important. The Bayer's process includes the concentration with the help of sodium hydroxide. Concentrated sodium hydroxide. Now after the ore is crushed and grinded, undergoes concentration for the removal of impurities like ferric oxide, silica, titanium oxide, uh, clay and many other such earthly impurities. For that the Bayer's process has to be followed in which the main reagent that we will be using is concentrated sodium hydroxide. So what is the uh, reaction that will be following that is Al2O3 dot 2H2O plus NaOH it will give us sodium it will give us sodium meta aluminate plus water. The temperatures are 140 to 150 degree C. The balancing. So here aluminium oxide that is hydrated when it is heated at 140 to 150 degree C with concentrated Sodium hydroxide, it gives us sodium meta aluminate and water, leaving behind all these impurities. Right? And the color of the impurities that is left behind is red. Why is the color red for the impurities which are left behind? 
mainly due to the presence of ferric oxide you know that the color of ferric iron is reddish brown in color so when it is reddish brown in color so the impurities which are left behind are red in color and so we call these impurities which are left behind as red mud so what have we obtained in this reaction is sodium meta aluminate and red mud red mud is then filtered out and the other further reaction takes place with the help of sodium sodium meta aluminate so this is the first reaction of bayer's process now remember the bayer's process is basically a combination of three reactions and what are we trying to do in this bayer's process we are simply trying to obtain aluminium oxide from the bauxite so here is the first reaction then comes your second reaction in second reaction this sodium meta aluminate is used sodium meta aluminate is then used and is treated with water this water at the temperature of 50 degree c here we were using the temperatures of 140 to 150 degree c whereas here we are using the temperatures of 50 degree c where the sodium aluminate is treated with water what do we obtain here we obtain sodium hydroxide plus aluminium hydroxide this aluminium hydroxide is then obtained as a precipitate it is then separated the aluminium oxide uh, hydroxide and then this aluminium hydroxide is then heated at a temperatures of 1000 degree c and what do we uh, observe here that aluminium hydroxide then produces the aluminium oxide plus water so here it is clear that from bauxite we started with the bauxite the main ore of aluminium and we obtained alumina alumina or we can also call it as aluminium oxide so just to obtain alumina or aluminium oxide from bauxite a uh, bayer's reaction basically three reactions are combined together in the presence of very important which reagent the reagent here is concentrated sodium hydroxide also observe the variation in the temperatures initially we were using a temperature of 140 to 150 degree c then the whole sodium meta aluminate was then cooled down it was brought to a very low temperature of 50 degree c and then see what a high cough temperature from 50 degree c it was taken directly to the 1000 degree c it was heated so much and after these three reactions the alumina or the aluminium oxide is obtained now remember this is not the extraction of aluminium this is just the step number 1 and what are we trying to do here we are simply trying to get the bauxite concentrated so basically this is the first step in the process of extraction of aluminium
So this is the process of concentration. In the process, we also had obtained red mud. Fine. Now, once the alumina is obtained, the second part of the extraction begins. Like we had uh, discussed in the previous lecture, after the concentration, the ore is then allowed to undergo two processes called roasting or calcination. In roasting, Generally, the sulfide ores are exposed so that they can be converted to the oxide ore. Fine. Whereas in calcination, generally the carbonate ores are uh, ex uh, done calcina are calcinated so that they also are converted to the oxide ore. But in Bayer's process, we already have the ore of aluminium which is oxide. So we will skip this step. We don't require roasting and we neither require the calcination since aluminium oxide is already an oxide ore. So now what do we do? The next step. The next step is after the concentration, roasting calcination is skipped. The next step comes is the reduction. We will also discuss that Aluminium has a great affinity. It has a great affinity for oxygen. Fine. Since aluminium has got great affinity for oxygen, so in here we cannot use any of the common reducing agents. We had learned about three common reducing agents. What were they? The common reducing agents were carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So since it cannot be reduced using three common reducing agents, the aluminum or the aluminum oxide has to undergo electrolytic reduction. So let us discuss electrolytic reduction. Now, this is the electrolytic reduction of aluminum. Here you can see, since we are making the alumina undergo the electrolytic reduction, obviously, when it is electrolytic reduction, we need to have an electrolytic cell. But before that, I want to discuss one small point with you. We had learned that aluminium oxide, Al2O3, has got a great affinity for oxygen. What is the meaning of this great affinity for oxygen? It simply means that this compound is a highly stable compound. It's a highly stable compound and hence a stable compound cannot be reduced. Reduced means removal of oxygen, right? So this stable compound cannot be reduced using those three common reducing agents. That is the meaning of great affinity for oxygen as it is forming a highly stable oxide of aluminium. Now let us talk of electrolytic reduction. Here you can see that an electrolytic cell has been drawn. In this electrolytic cell, the electrolytic cell, here the speciality of the cell is that it is made up of iron, right? And the special feature is that this cell has got a sloping bottom. It has got a slope, sloping bottom. Why does the cell has this sloping bottom? Just to facilitate uh, the exit of molten aluminium. So we have got an electrolytic cell made up of iron and the special feature is sloping bottom. Why is the sloping bottom there? For the exit of the molten aluminium. That is number one. 
then in this electrolytic cell the temperatures are to be maintained at around 950 degree c now what is this 950 degree c this is the melting point of alumina since uh we are using here the electrolyte in its molten state so the temperatures maintained are the melting point of at which it actually starts melting now what is the electrolyte that we will be using here now this is very important you need to keep it in mind so that you do not make any mistake class here we are not going to use pure aluminum oxide or alumina but we are going to use a combination of three different substances uh, in which two are the ores of aluminum one is aluminum oxide which is alumina then along with this we will be using cryolite which is another ore of aluminum and that is Al3AlF6 it is cryolite okay and along with the cryolite we will also be using fluor spar that is fluor so here we have got three different uh, uh, substances which are to be used for the uh, as an electrolyte of the uh, aluminum this is aluminum oxide then we have got cryolite then we have got fluor spar we also call it as calcium fluoride now what is the ratio that we are going to use here is the ratio of all these three are going to be 20% 20% aluminum oxide and 20% calcium fluoride and 60% cryolite so when you write in exams that which electrolyte has to be used for the electrolytic reduction of alumina then this combination along with the name of the uh, electrolytes are to be used and all these are to be in their molten all these are to be in their molten state so since all the Uh, compounds are to be present in the molten state that is why such high temperature has to be there now after this let us discuss the total type of ions that are present here so ions that we will be obtaining are going to be from aluminum oxide we will be obtaining al2o3 this will be giving us aluminum ion plus oxide ion right sorry then a uh, cryolite will be giving us sodium ion plus aluminum ion plus fluoride right and then calcium fluoride will be giving us ca2 positive plus f negative so you can see how many ions have we got three cations and two anions aluminum sodium and calcium along with that we have got oxide and fluoride ions now let us talk of the electrodes next part comes as the electrodes what are the electrodes being used here in this diagram you can see that 
this red thick lining is the cart, uh, is the iron tank and this iron tank is covered with a carbon lining so this carbon lining is being used here as the cathode which is the negative terminal the carbon lining is the cathode along with that are present these graphite rods the graphite rods are rods are acting as the anode which is the positive terminal and what is the electrolyte here that we know the electrolyte is the combination of all these three compounds in their molten state right so i hope the electrolytic cell description is clear to all now let us see what happens at cathode and what happens at anode so for that let me start with the reaction at cathode out of these three cations since the concentration of aluminum cations is the highest so according to the preferential discharge the preference will be given to the aluminum ions because aluminum ions are there produced not only by alumina but fluor uh, cryolite also so at cathode all the three cations will migrate but the discharge will be only of the aluminum ions how will they discharge three positive are there see three positive so they are going to gain three electrons so that after that they become neutral and can they are not going to deposit they will be in the molten state and through this exit point they are going to flow out of this electrolytic cell and will be collected so it is as good as deposited not at the anode but at the um, uh, but in the whatever we are trying to collect them so that's it now let's come to the next part the reaction at anode now what happens at anode see there is fluoride and oxide also but since oxide is in the highest concentration therefore although fluoride and oxide will migrate towards the anode they being the anions what will happen they will uh, one of them will be discharged and let us see what happens after that the <clears throat> oxide ion as well as the fluoride will migrate discharge will take place only for the oxide ion how it is going to lose it is going to it is going to lose two electrons fine o2 minus minus two electrons and it will give you one nascent oxygen atom this oxygen will further combine with one more oxygen atom this concept we have already learned in the previous chapter of electrolysis so this nascent oxygen will combine with another atom of oxygen atom will produce oxygen that means at anode oxygen should liberate i am using the term should but will it happen let us see here the anode is made up of graphite right now what is graphite graphite is an allotrope of carbon so in other words graphite is also carbon and at this graphite the oxygen 
is getting discharged and is trying to deposit over there so that it can liberate. But will the reaction stop there? No. See what will happen after this. Since graphite is carbon and oxygen is liberating at this anode, so what will happen? Oxygen will liberate at carbon. Ye carbon kaha se aya? G R A P H I T E. Graphite. What is graphite? Graphite is this anode. Right? So do not get confused that this C comes from where? This C is graphite, which is what you are using as anode. So oxygen, uh, this oxygen plus graphite will liberate carbon monoxide. So the reaction at anode will not stop at the liberation of oxygen. This oxygen, since it is liberating at carbon which is the graphite and what is the graphite here it's the anode fine so it will produce carbon monoxide now again carbon monoxide since will get further oxidized kyun kyunki piche se niche se jo liberation ho raha hai yahan se jo oxygen produce ho rahi hai that is still coming the the stream of oxygen has not stopped after forming carbon monoxide abhi bhi piche se ye pura reaction jo hai it is in process so what will happen this carbon monoxide will further get oxidized ye wala oxygen kahan se aaya the same oxygen theek hai jo piche se stream aa raha tha oxygen ka jo ye produce hua the stream is still coming and this stream will further oxidize carbon monoxide and will produce carbon dioxide so ultimate product that is liberated at anode is not oxygen but carbon dioxide i hope this is clear to all that carbon that we are using here is not Uh, present in the reaction but since it is acting as the anode and will get oxidized the graphite will get oxidized and due to this the carbon dioxide is liberated which is the ultimate product so what are we what will we obtain after the end of the reaction at cathode cations are migrating we are getting molten aluminum uh, at the cathode which is then collected at the from the exit point and at anode instead of oxygen the carbon dioxide is liberated so two products aluminum and carbon dioxide this is very very important all right now let us discuss about the nature of these gases at anode basically in the during the whole process we are getting three gases one two and three remember that these two gases are neutral gases these are neutral gases whereas carbon dioxide is an acidic gas so during the process we are obtaining only one acidic gas which is carbon dioxide whereas oxygen and carbon monoxide they both are neutral gases so i hope this is clear now there are certain questions that will pop up in your mind once you observe this process the first thing is when this oxidation of anode takes place then you will observe that gradually the graphite rods will start losing their mass they will start becoming thin they will start becoming small we call this process of becoming 
smaller in size of anode we call it as burning burning of anode so what is burning of anode during this whole reaction the anode loses its mass and becomes smaller becomes smaller in size why does it become smaller in size common sense se bataiye smaller in size because continuously the graphite rods which are actually the carbon they are continuously reacting with the oxygen हमारे पास ग्रेफाइड रॉड जो है वो लिमिटेड सप्लाई में है जबकि जो हमारा रिएक्शन है दैट इज गिविंग अस अ कंटिन्यूस सप्लाई ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट इज गिविंग अस द कंटिन्यूस सप्लाई ऑफ ऑक्सीजन जो कंटिन्यूसली इस ग्रेफाइड रॉड से रिएक्ट कर रही है और ग्रेफाइड रॉड कंटिन्यूसली आपको कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड प्रोड्यूस करके दे रही है तो ऑब्वियस है जब कार्बन रॉड्स जो हैं जो ग्रेफाइड रॉड्स हैं वो जब कंटिन्यूसली रिएक्ट कर रही हैं और पीछे से कोई सप्लाई नहीं आ रहा तो उनका साइज स्मॉल हो जाएगा एंड दैट दे विल रीच एट अ पॉइंट वेयर देयर साइज विल बी सो स्मॉल दैट दीज बर्ड एनोड विल रिक्वायर अ रिप्लेसमेंट and that is why ye jo aapke graphite rods hai they need to be changed periodically har thode time ke baad in graphite rods ko change karna padta hai kyun karna padta hai because they undergo burning process yahan pe burning se matlab flame heat light ka production nahi hai yahan pe burning se matlab hai oxidation because they are continuously undergoing oxidation and that is why their size is becoming smaller and they need to be replaced time and again so this whole process of electrolytic reduction of alumina we call it as hall 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 herald process okay it is equally important as that of bears process so in the electrolytic reduction of alumina i have just wind it up by telling you that uh, by revising the bears process and the hall and herald's process in bears process we simply concentrated the bauxite ore by removing all the impurities using one reagent concentrated sodium hydroxide whereas in hall and herald this is the uh, purification or the reduction of alumina uh, which is electrolytic reduction using which electrolyte a uh, combination of three molten uh, compounds out of which two were the uh, ores of aluminium bauxite and cryolite and the other one was calcium fluoride we also call it as fluor spar that is added simply to increase the conductivity so that the number of ions since they get increased hence the conductivity is also improved now one more thing class when the whole process is going on just to save these graphite rods from burning so that hum iske jo burning of graphite rods hai unko thoda hum slow down kar sake uske liye ek aur bahut interesting method apply kiya jata hai what is that at the uh, surface of the electrolyte the molten electrolyte a powdered coke is sprinkled why is the powdered coke sprinkled here powdered powdered coke powdered coke is sprinkled so that when the oxygen liberates when the oxygen liberates it will oxidize the coke which is present at the uh, surface of the molten electrolyte so most of the oxygen gets uh, utilized by this a uh, powdered coke and whatever is left whatever whatever is able to liberate 
despite this powdered coal sprinkled at the surface then further oxidizes the graphite so uska ek bahut bada benefit kya hai powdered coal ka that it simply slows down the burning of anode so i hope all this is clear now the next part is alloys that i'll be discussing you in the uh, with you in the next lecture till then revise it read it that's all thank you